This is Patrick, the owner of Geochron, and let's take a closer look at the Geochron Atlas. In this video, I want you to see what you're going to get with the Geochron Atlas, how to install it, and quickly set it up on your display. I'm going to show you how to turn this powerful digital display computer from this to that. It's going to look great. The whole package is about a pound and a half and has everything for your 4K display. Now first, that handy little setup guide that I wrote, it's going to tell you everything I'm going to tell you right now. Next up, the Geochron Atlas itself. The remote control, the HDMI dongle, and the power supply. All of these things are required to operate the Atlas. Let's take a closer look. On the exterior, you can see the Wi-Fi antenna and the Ethernet connection, if you so desire. And let's talk about the case. It's a composite material with ridges designed to shed heat because this is basically a fanless laptop computer that fits in your hand. It was designed in, to be used in commercial applications where it would quietly sit behind the TV unattended for long periods of time. It mounts directly behind your TV with the foot-long HDMI cable. Now, once you plug it in, it'll boot directly to the Geochron, so you don't need to dig for the power button every time. Like, it's like a Chrome stick, if you've used one of those. It's a tight fit. It won't fall. Try to give it some space, because it will get warm. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Next up is the remote control. In the battery compartment of the remote control, you'll find the USB dongle that you need to plug into one of the two USB ports in the side of the Atlas. And then there are included batteries. Put the batteries in and put them in the right way. Seriously, uh, it does happen. People are like, it doesn't work. Well, did you put the batteries in right? <laughs> and lastly, the included power supply plugs in to the USB-C port on the side. You know it's working because there's a little blue light that's on. It'll automatically boot to the Geochron. Now, demonstrating from the back of my dusty TV that I have here, find your HDMI port, plug in the HDMI cable, and attach the Geochron Atlas. It doesn't have to swing about as you see here, of course, but wherever you put it, give it a little bit of space so it can shed heat. Above all, don't glue it or tape it to the back of your TV. Now, before you power on the Atlas, make sure the TV is on, or you might get a lower resolution map than you expect. Using the 4K display here in my office, I'm going to take you through a quick 4K setup with this computer as it boots up for the first time. Hello there. So I am booting up the Geochron Digital Atlas right now. This little computer was actually designed as a commercial grade facial recognition computer and uh, powers many of those electronic menu boards that you see at fast food restaurants, except this one is powerful enough to display and render in 4K. That's the big difference. You can stream in 4K all day long with cheap stuff, but to render in 4K, that's totally a different matter. That's what the Geochron Atlas is designed to do. The live layers require the internet, but everything else is internal to the computer. As cool as this little computer is, it cannot predict the weather. So we're gonna have to connect to the internet to do that and let supercomputers download to our orchestration server and they'll send it to your Geochron Atlas. I'm in the internet tab. I'm going to jump down to tip of the spear, which is my network, and I'm going to press OK and enter my password. And I'm not going to show it to you. <laughs> and I'm coming down to say Submit. In a few seconds, that little green prompt will show up the top that says that the Wi-Fi network is connected successfully. It'll take a second for the internet status to show at the top of the tab. It'll give your IP address and you know that you're connected and it'll go to start downloading weather layers. And talking about layers, I there's lots of ways to set up the Geochron Atlas to look at the world in real time. We're just gonna take a quick tour of my favorite. So I'm gonna set it up my favorite way right now. You can do whatever you like, but just as an introduction, here's what I like. I like the human geopolitical map. I'm going to jump over to layers. I'm going to turn up the night opacity up to 90% so that when it's dark, 
it's dark. The Terminator line, as you can see, is a harsh straight line coming right across Colorado right now. You could set it to soft, which looks like twilight, but that is not the way it looks from space, so I prefer it in normal. Human light's opacity is at 70%. I'm going to turn down air traffic to zero. Jump up population density to 90% because it's really colorful. I'll show you what that means later. And let's go over to live. Now here's where we get into the weather. Um, in the weather, the precipitation opacity, which you see on your screen as these sort of purplish waves and that are moving across the screen, uh, that's the where it's precipitating on Earth right now. And I'm going to go for 40% cloud opacity. And then while I'm here, I'm going to jump down to satellites. All public satellites are listed on the Geochron, but you can't show them all at one time because there's just too many. So you can go for the last 30 days of satellites, and that's really great if you want to show off to your friends, like, this is what's happening in space today. They're launching satellites by the hundreds going down to... My favorite is to show the weather satellites because they're the ones that are actually picking up those patterns that you see displayed on the left-hand side of your screen in the purple and the white. You'll get a better picture of those right now. I'm pressing OK to show all. I also want to know how high they are and how fast they're going, so I'm going to show the info. And then I'm going to go to show future, and it this puts down a path of where they're going to be in 30 uh, minutes. And uh, we'll bump that to 40, now 50, now 60 minutes into the future. Let's set the time while we're here. It is 1.58 a.m. in GMT, but I don't live there. I live in Time Zone U, which is on the West Coast. So I'm jumping down to Time Zone U. Click, 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 all the way down. Press OK. Um, the reason why we have a number of cities to choose from, why not just choose Time Zone U? Some of those cities in regions, they practice daylight savings time and some don't. Los Angeles is a day and a half drive from me, so I'm going to press select and you can see it change there on the lower left-hand corner of the screen. Going over to system, we had many customers who said, I need to know what UTC is at any given time. Could you please display that at the same time? Yes, I can. Under the System tab, Show UTC. And there it appears along with the date in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. You want it in 12 hour, it's right there too. Lastly, I'll mention if you need any help with this, there's a, there's a video tab, all sorts of videos, Help tab. Now, here we are, pressing the Back button. This is a busy, busy, busy map. Uh, I think Europe always looks really cool because you can see that dark blue. That's where people live, and you can see it's cloudy in the UK, and there's a storm coming off of Spain and moving up into the France. I think that's pretty awesome. But my favorite configuration is to take this setup and give it grayscale mode. Let's do that in three, two, one. Okay, that looks awesome. That's taken all the color out of the base map, but retain the color of every every live layer and layer and regular layer, static layer in front of it. And you'll be up and running in no time. You can always find us at support at geocron.com or 800-342-1661 or check the website for frequently asked questions for the Geocron Atlas 4K.